have got at least seven reasons why you should perhaps consider selling print-on-demand POD on Etsy. So let's get into this. First of all, what is POD? What is print on demand? It is simply you set, you using a third party company to take your designs that you've created and a buyer can purchase them and this company prints them on any of the places that you've suggested. It can be on t-shirts, it can be on mugs. These companies can even do embroidery, they can make hats, they can make socks, they can make phone cases, all with the designs that you've created and with no risk to you because there's no charge until somebody buys. So that is what print on demand is. And the good news is that this can integrate with an Etsy shop. So it can actually be quite easy, easy to sell print on demand on Etsy where a customer where you can create listings where you've used your designs and used the third party company to look at the types of items they can create and then you can make mock-ups to show what your what your design's going to look like on a mug or a t-shirt so the customer can buy it through Etsy it integrates with the other company so your order is sent to the other company they print and they ship to the customer so let's talk about those pros. And you might be wondering after this, you might be all very excited and say, this sounds great. I want to do print on demand, but there are some cons and that will be in my next video coming soon. So firstly, obviously this is low risk. You have bypassed a lot of time and investment. You don't need a big inventory. You just have to make something digital or it can be if you're an artist, you can get your works of art scanned and then that f you can use that file. But you were already making your works of art and you're finding ways to diversify that. Or you make a digital file that your only investment is time for yourself to learn how to do this and the software and perhaps the tools you need to make the digital files, but there's no additional cost. There's so there's not that risk. You don't have an inventory of a bunch of things sitting about that if they don't sell it's a big deal, it's cost you money, you don't have the raw materials that you need to buy to build up such a big inventory. So it's definitely, it's that lowest barrier to entry for a business that you can really have. Um, there is a growing demand for this. During the pandemic, print on demand type items saw a massive surge in sales, people were wanting to buy them. It was a great way at the beginning of the pandemic, everybody wanted to buy masks and the print on demand companies were able to pivot and offer masks as a raw material that you could, well, the seller could put their designs onto so the buyer could buy customized one, well, not one of a kind, but customized different masks. Um, and really this, this surge in print on demand type items is showing no sign of slowing. Um, another big one, historically, when you were designing t-shirts, you either had to make them yourself, t-shirts or other such items, you either had to make them yourself or if you were going through a third party to get it at a decent price, you had to create a big run of products. So you had to know you were going to sell 50, 100, 2000 of these items before you got them made. Now you can do one offs. You can even do basically one of a kind. You can create a digital thing for a person and have it sent for an individual one of a kind thing. It's probably best not to do it that way. It's better to have things that you make one design and it sells hundreds of items, but you don't need to. You can sell one thing, which is a great way to get started um, and come on from that. It's the ultimate in passive income. You design one thing once and it just keeps on reselling and reselling and reselling. So for one piece of work, you keep on making more and more money. Sounds ideal. It can be as easy as that, but we, we know it's not as easy as that. Um, another thing, if you have an audience, you can monetize your audience. If you have built up a following on social media and you've got fun things, you call your followers like 
my crafty clan. Um, you call your followers something, you've got an identity altogether. You can monetize that with fun things. I I have a spring shop with with my mug and some t-shirts and things that I did for a bit of funsies. Um, I don't push that very hard, as you've noticed. But yeah, it's, it's a fun way if you have a following, your followers can all drink out of the same design of mug, not the same actual mug, that's Jeremy, um, but you get what I'm saying. This may be the easiest way to start a business. We said it's low barrier to entry. Yeah, there there is also less, hopefully less, dealing with customers and everything. Someone buys, the print-on-demand company makes it, ships it out to them. So there's like that. Obviously, there's there's some dealing with customers. There's no getting away from it. But it is potentially easier once you've got everything set up. And the final thing is, it's quick to pivot. You can pivot. You can test, and you can scrap ideas as easily as anything. So if you find that great keyword, mushroom lamp that we talked about a few weeks ago, um, not sure how that well. I suppose print on demand companies could do lamps, who knows, or a t shirt, or who knows. But you found that absolute perfect keyword. You can design, hopefully, in an afternoon, you can design four or five different things, get them up in your shop, or as mugs and t shirts and fen cases and 70 other different things. So you have got a product out there to jump on and hopefully find the thing that people are looking for and make lots of sales. You can test things. You have an idea now. If you're a silversmith and your raw materials are ridiculously expensive, it's difficult to go on that flight of fancy to make things that you aren't sure are going to work or not. And definitely sometimes it's that flight of fancy, it's that new idea that is the great thing that gets you lots of sales. But it's hard if your raw materials are so expensive. So you can test things easier practically free. You can have new ideas. You can test putting your designs on coasters, on curtains, on bed linen. All these options are there. You can test it. And if it doesn't work, you've not really lost anything. The price of a an Etsy listing and scrapping ideas. Yeah. You don't get so attached to them if you've got lots of different things if for some reason your shop just never sells bed linen delete <laughs> it's pretty easy so there are some of the pros as to why selling printing on demand on etsy could be a good thing lots and lots of shops do it it is very profitable business for many people. In fact, it is the number one type of new shop that I'm seeing coming in every day. People say jewelry saturated. I'm not saying nothing's saturated. It's got growing customer base, so it's not saturated. But there are way more new print on demand shops coming in that I'm seeing than there are jewelry, probably because it's so easy to start up. So it's so easy to start up. So it's potentially something you should consider, but wait, my next video, we're going to talk about the cons. But for now, in the comments below, let me know, do you do print on demand? Have you considered it? Have you seen any other problems? Have you seen? No, this is the pros video. Have you seen any other pros with print on demand? Right, I'll see you in the next video.